Hey there, welcome to ProTech. Today we're going to check out a video on replacing calipers and rotors sent to us by Wyatt Henry. He does a great job of showing us how to do this repair for yourself. So let's take a look. Does your steering wheel shake when you hit the brakes? Do they squeal so bad it drives you nuts? Are you tired of shops charging outrageous fees to change them out? There is a better way. I'm going to show you how to do it yourself. First, for safety, let's chalk the rear wheel. Next, find the proper jacking point and get that car up in the air. Now that the car's up, we need jack stands. For safety, we need to put these jack stands in the proper place. You know, I had a twin brother who thought jack stands were just a big waste of time. Remember, both sides. Next, we take off the wheel. Now, I don't like losing lug nuts, so what I like to do is cover them with the tire. Next, we need to remove the actual caliper, and there's two bolts that do that. And sometimes, when you try to remove these bolts, they're connected to a slider pin. And if you try to move it, sometimes it moves that too. So it's a good idea to get a little adjustable wrench, or whatever size that is, hold it together, and then squeeze it. Ah, and then we're actually broke loose. Now we'll get the bottom one. And it's actually a good idea, before you fully take one of them out, to break the other one loose. Because if you uh, take one fully out and start to break the other one out, the whole caliper will slide right on over. And you want to place these two bolts together, but out of the way, where you won't be able to kick them. Once you've gotten those two bolts off, now you should be able to slide this caliper straight out and off. Nice. Alright, now... You don't want the caliper to be hanging on the brake line itself. So generally, you get some bailing wire or a bungee strap and hold it up on there. I actually like to just rest it right on the knuckle. And it stays there just fine. So now, we have access to the brake pads. And the first thing you need to remove is these little anti-vibration clips. They keep the pads from... Uh, resting on the rotor. So we'll put those off to the side. And now you should be able to just pull these straight out. There we go. Now to get the rotor off, we actually need to remove the caliper bracket itself. And it's held on by some 19 millimeter bolts here inside. And there's two of them. Be prepared to put a little force to them. Break them both loose, so that way you're not having to spin the caliper bracket while you're trying to break another one loose. But once you've broken loose, they usually thread out really nice and smooth. Alright, and once again, put these two bolts off to the side in a safe place so you don't kick them or lose them. And then the caliper bracket comes straight off. First part of this rotor, and on these particular cars, not all cars have them, but some do. I have this little Phillips screw in here, and it's there to retain the rotor in place. If you try to use just a regular screwdriver on this thing, you know, chances are you're just going to strip this thing. They actually have a tool for this. 
And so it's called a impact tool. You put it in, turn it all the way to the left, and when you hit it, it will impact and turn at the exact same time. And that's all you need, and it comes out super nice. And if your rotor is welded on there, and you can't get it off by hand, you uh, thread in these little nuts, and as you thread them, they will push the rotor off the hub, but now the rotor can come straight off. If your brakes are shaking your steering wheel, it's from a warped rotor, and there's two ways to fix that. Either you replace them all together with a new rotor, or you can take them down to a machine shop and have them turned. Now, if you're going to go get them turned, you're going to have to notice that in here it says there's a minimum thickness that this rotor can be right here, that they can safely take off material and uh, make it true again. Now, if you have new rotors, they're coated in a rust inhibitor, and that doesn't react well with brake pads, so we got to clean that off with some brake cleaner. All clean. Now we want to match up the uh, little screw hole with that little threaded piece. Put our Phillips screw back in. little love tap back in. Now we need to put on the caliper bracket and this is actually something that a lot of people overlook when they're doing their brakes because there's some important parts going on in here. One is the slider pin. This thing moves in and out as the pads wear and uh, this is what allows the pads to travel along as they wear down. And if these don't move really nice and smooth you need to re-grease them. So to take these out you just twist them off the little uh, rubber gasket thing there and pull them straight out. Grab a little brake grease. You spread that on there in a nice even coat. Not too much because you'll end up making a mess. And you carefully slide that right on in there. And you push it until that uh, rubber bushing goes back into play. And you're freshly re-greased and you're not going to have any caliper sliding problems. Important tech tip too, do this one at a time because usually one of these slider pins has a little rubber anti-vibration bushing in there and it only fits in one side. So take one side off, grease it up, stick it back in, and then do if you do it one at a time, you're not going to have to worry about which one went where. And these calipers are actually designed with these clips in mind. So if you're missing these clips and you put the brake pad in there, it's going to rattle around in there and it's going to make a lot of noise. A lot of times you get brand new ones. But if you don't have brand new ones, you need to clean these off. And you do want to make sure that this aligns properly. And if you put these in where these are off kilter a little bit, this will constantly rub against the rotor and make this high pitched squeal. And also when you're putting your pads in, that you're not pushing these out of their groove. So now that this caliper is fully maintained, we have good sliders, we have good clean clips, and they're all aligned properly, we can put this thing back on. And so you put it on that way. And if you can get the top bolt in and threaded, then it's easy to get the bottom one. And these generally thread super nice. You can get them almost all the way to flush just by hand. All right. You wanna make sure these are on nice and tight. Once the brake pad material wears down to a certain point, this will start squealing against the rotor. And so when you start hearing a high-pitched squeal, that is a warning indicator that your pads are getting awful low. That when the material runs out and you start hitting this metal backing plate, it will destroy your rotor instantly. So when you hear this, change your pads. That's a lot, e a lot cheaper to change just your pads than it is to change your pads and rotors. Now it's time to install the actual brake pads. Now these pads need to slot into these little uh, clips right here and that's the part that's going to slide so I like to put a little grease on each pad just on the contact points where it's going to be uh, contacting those clips so it can slide along nice and easy as it goes along. It's just a nice little touch on each end of the brake pad is all you need. On this particular one there's these little clips right here that kind of hold it as an, in as a retainer and then there's a little section that kind of pokes out a little bit. So that is what allows you to slide it in. So you want to slide it in where you're going into the uh, retainers 
and then as you push it in, it slides on that little intake thing and just slides right into place. Usually on these pads, where this little uh, warning tab needs to be, usually needs to be on the side with the pistons facing down. Because if any, any side, if any pad is going to wear first, it's going to be this one. So that's why they have it closest to the pistons on the bottom. So we'll put this guy in second. Perfect. Next, now that we have new brake pads on there and they're a lot thicker than the old brake pads, we need to push these pistons back in so we can actually get the caliper back over the pads. So to do that, a lot of people use giant C, you know, channel locks or a C-clamp. I actually happen to have a nifty little brake tool that does a really good job with that. It just slots right in here. And as you screw it in, it pushes that piston straight back. Now, there's only a few points that you actually need to grease. One is the caliper sliders and the very end of the pad as it goes into the clip. Now, there's no need to slather the whole back end of this pad with grease. All you really need to do is go to the caliper, get a small amount of grease, and put it around the actual contact point itself. And so if you put a little bit of grease, just a thin film of grease, on the actual contact points, that'll do the exact same thing without having a big old nasty mess of grease on each pad. Before we put the caliper back on, we need to put these little anti-rattle clips in. And so these will keep the pad off the rotor when it's not working. Now we're ready to put on the actual caliper. It should go on nice and smooth. You want to make sure that you don't twist this brake cable. It needs to come out nice and smooth. All right. Then as you're putting on the brake caliper, you want to make sure that your piston sliders are in far enough for it to actually go in. All right. Last thing are these two bolts. And then our caliper should be in place. And so you want to wiggle it around until you feel the threads catch. You should be able to tighten that in nicely. See that? You'll be twisting this forever and it'll never get tight. So you got to hold both ends and then it'll go tight. You got to make sure not to crank this thing down to a million foot pounds too. Like usually just as tight as you can get it with a regular wrench and that's all the tight you need. All right. And now that we're all together, it's time to test and see if everything is okay. If you want to slowly turn it, and as long as you don't hear any crazy high-pitched squeals or any crazy grinding, you should be good to go. You also want to check and make sure your caliper can move back and forth nice and easy a little bit with the pistons fully retracted. That, that lets you know that your sliders are working just fine and they're going to continue to work for miles to come. Alright, saved lug nuts. Right. You actually thread these in a fair amount by hand and then you're guaranteed you're not going to cross any threads. When you tighten lug nuts down, it's important to do it in a diagonal pattern. You start on one end, go to the other, and keep going across until you've gotten all of them tight. Way less of a chance of warping your rim or doing anything stupid in there. Now that the lugs are mildly tightened and the car's on the ground, it's time to torque these bad boys to 90 foot-pounds. Now that the pistons have been fully retracted and you have new pads in there, there's a little bit of distance between where that piston actually connects the pad, so you're going to have a really soft brake pedal for a little bit. So what you want to do is, before you even start it up and go anywhere, you want to start pumping the brake pedal until you start feeling it firm right up. Now that we're all done with the brakes, we need to do a proper bed-in procedure. What that entails is getting the brakes through a nice heat cycle. So what you need to do is go find a road, go at about 45 miles an hour and slow all the way down to like 5 miles an hour, not coming to a complete stop. And you want to do that about 3 or 4 times and get the brakes properly heated up. Then drive around nice and easy for a little while, let them cool down, and at that point they'll be properly bed-in 
and should be nice and quiet through their whole service interval. Congratulations, you went from this to this.